All right, well, I'm going to walk you through the Sacred Places um, lecture for this week, since you'll be using it in your um, activity. Uh, so each slide, how it sort of organizes visually is information, a slide of a sacred place, information, slide of a sacred place. So the, the pictures are not necessarily keyed to the text. They're just examples of sacred places. And most people should know which one this, um, this is, uh, Stonehenge, of course. So I start off talking to you about um, why places um, are, are sacred and why these sacred places are important whether it's an well, a, a mythic place, right, that lives just in the imagination, not physically, or a particular mountain or stream or cave that um, is sacred to an individual group of people. Why, why is there an important, importance attached to this? And you should read the introductions to all the sections in the Leeming textbook as well for more information. There's Ayers Rock. Um, there are two scholars we'll be looking at. Andrew Gulliford is one of those, and he has um, looked at different places, and, and he sort of developed this not really for myth studies as much as it's for um, people working with um, tribes and identifying sacred places and how to protect them and that sort of thing. He's come up with nine categories of sacred places that um, work for any culture, not just Native American um, sites, which was uh, pretty much originally developed for. So um, you can go through this list and um, see sites can be sacred because they're associated with pilgrimage routes, routes that um, people take to, to a pilgrimage to a particular place or um, a particular church. Um, a, an altar, maybe some worship has gone on here at some point. Maybe this is the site of the ruins of this people's ancestors. Um, petroglyphs and pictographs. Petroglyphs, uh, th those are really both names for rock, rock paintings or rock carvings. Um, a place may be sacred because it's a burial or massacre uh, location. Maybe it's a battlefield or a place where a lot of people have been buried. Um, so these are the, the places that, um, the, the categories that Gulliford has for why places can be considered sacred. And here's uh, the medicine wheel in Wyoming. Um, so a little bit more about Gulliford, Machu Picchu in Peru. And then we provide some examples of um, Mount Shasta, um, Taos in New Mexico, I believe. Um, and the Badland rock formations and, and why they're important to these particular cultures. And this is Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree, receiving enlightenment at some point. Vinnie Deloria um, also writes um, a, a lot about Native American um, culture. And his categories are based on different criteria than Gulliford's. He has four categories. And here's the, the Ganges River in India. And his categories have to do with how they're sacred in terms of higher powers or humans. So a site can be sacred because of something that happened to humans there. And you can see how these overlap um, with, with Deloria's. Uh, a battlefield could be important because of what humans did there, the humans who have died for a particular cause. So it's not always related to a mythical story. It can be related to um, historical events as well. Um, a site could be sacred because maybe that's where something happened, where some interaction between a god and a human took place, or um, you know, like most biblical stories would, would fit into this uh, category. And there's Mount Fuji in Japan. Um, it could be a, a place where um, God revealed himself to a particular individual. I guess it's a, a little different than um, number two. Higher powers working through humans. Um, so, for example, miracles taking place, um, or maybe a a lake or a a um, structure being um, built through the powers of a uh, a supernatural uh, deity. Whereas higher powers revealing themselves might be a place where he gives the example here where Moses um, spoke to, or excuse me, God spoke to Moses through the um, agency of the, the burning bush. Ongoing acti activities. Um, just because we're talking about something being sacred doesn't mean this happened in the past. It can be ongoing. Um, a lot of things having to do with human rights, um, world, world um, war monuments, 
um, the continuing action, military action around the world can leave sites that are considered sacred by people. Maybe it's a place where people still pilgrimage to, still worship at. So you're not necessarily looking at a place that's sacred because of something that happened in the past, but because of what still continues to go on there today. So his categories, let's scroll back to um, Gulliford's, are more about what goes well, I don't want to say what goes on at them because it's happening in Gulliford as well, but it's more about, um, it's more broad, I guess. Gulliford's very specific about what these sites were used for um, and what they represent, and Deloria is based on human and divine agency and what they, it's kind of a, a spectrum of totally human at one point, totally um, 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 divine at the other, and the two in the middle are a combination of those human and um, divine interactions in the, in the space that makes it um, sacred. Um, places can be physical, in the physical world, like Mount Fuji here, or they can be a place that's referenced in a, referenced in a myth or a spiritual text, which we have not seen, right? We, we don't, if, if there were a really a Garden of Eden at one point, we don't know where it might have been located. There's some scholarly guesses as to where such a garden might have existed, but we can no longer see it. It's not some place where we can go visit. So they're equally important to people. A, a place doesn't have to be um, in physical existence in order for it to exert a wide influence on people and their beliefs. All right. Um, so there are myth types, or what we call tropes, like um, there are myths of, about sacred waters, myths about mountains, gardens, uh, magical realms, and these are some of the uh, categories that Leeming uses in his text. There's Mount Sinai. Um, and then this last place, this last couple of slides, there's the Grand Canyon and the, the, uh, a couple more slides, where we're talking about um, sacred sites and what's sacred to different cultures and how sometimes those sites clash um, or, or the people clash over those sites. For example, um, the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem is sacred to Islamic, um, Christian, and uh, Jewish cultures. All three have a link to that particular spot and in their own particular religious beliefs, um, identify it with certain events that have taken place at that space. So these these uh, beliefs can clash over um, specific locations and people fighting over access and, and um, ownership of these spaces. Um, there's a belief that because my because my um, religion holds um, the Garden of Eden sacred, it's more important and more valuable than another culture's beliefs that the Grand Canyon is important, right? So this is just sort of a warning here to not necessarily try to um, be judgmental in whose sites are more important. The point is that people hold um, sites to be sacred for a variety of reasons, and they are all um, equally valid reasons. So that's what this last part is about. So there's a couple more images. I love this shot of the Grand Canyon and the, the Kaaba in, in, um, in Mecca. So we see sites that are totally man-made, totally natural, and then um, locations that have an importance to humans as things they use, like, like a river. Um, so um, as you work through this material, read it closely, pay attention to it because you will be using it in your activity. And please ask if you have any questions.